Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. Joining us now is a man that's better dressed than I, Landon Fanata. How you doing, man? <laughs> better dressed, I don't know about that. Oh, hey. yeah, man. I'm doing great. You're looking flashy, I like that. Thank you, sir. Thank is you. this the whole new persona with the uh, groovy Lando name now? You know, it's always kind of been the persona and then the name just got <laughs> tagged onto it. Yeah, that, we were talking about it earlier, you look like one of the brothers from the Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> Someone else was telling you that earlier? Yeah, Joey uh, Villasenor just got done telling me that <laughs> right before I got here. A legend in his own right yeah, there. Absolutely. So obviously you're joining us here because RFA 36 March 4th you get your title shot against Hione Barcelos man for the featherweight title all of a sudden you're featherweight man what's up with that you know it's been the plans for a long time <laughs> uh, meant to get had it was supposed to happen back in August didn't go through and now it's gonna finally take its course how have you had to change yourself I guess mentally and I think more importantly the diet <laughs> now yeah. that you're moving down to 145 how's it that struggle or if it's even yeah, been a struggle? Um, you know, it's it's a little bit more strict. I gotta get a little bit lighter this time. I don't have as much uh, leeway with my diet. Right. But yeah, it's all the same more or less. The weight cut's just gonna be bigger. Yeah. It's the last time you weighed 145, man. Uh, <laughs> August 6th. That'd be the last time I weighed 145. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously the last time you were here, you were pre we were previewing a fight between you and Chad Curry, a mm -hmm. guy out of Minnesota, and you fought him in Minnesota. What mm -hmm. was that like to be in hostile territory like that? Oh, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> I got booed walking out. Yeah. I got booed when my name was announced. Um, then there was a fight, minute 30 in, knocked him out, finished him. He didn't know what happened. Uh, and the entire crowd went silent. To me, it's interesting to or a lot of people, they, they thrive and live off of the silence rather than you know, people cheering. Why is that? I don't know, I guess everybody just has their own mindset. Yeah. yeah, I'm not really sure, but personally, whether it's silent or loud, I don't notice. You're just in the zone the just whole time? Just in the zone. I only knew that that was happening afterwards. Yeah. You know? yeah. Your opponent here for the championship, of course, Barcelo's the RFA champion right now at Featherweight, mm -hmm. nine and one record. What can you say about the guy's skills? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu world champion, mm -hmm. Pan American mm -hmm. freestyle silver medalist. He's got like four knockouts, something around that. Um, but I don't think he's as good as people think he is. He's been talked about for a while. I think he's mentally weak. I think he's going to break. I don't think his ground, his wrestling game transfer well into MMA. And I think uh, he's predictable. And I'm going to make it quick and make it clean. What advantage do you think you have coming down, obviously, from 155 and you know 158, the, all these other weight classes at a higher level that you fought at, and now bringing all that down to 145? Well, I mean, obviously, I'm going to be the bigger, stronger guy, but I'm sparring with guys like John Dodson, Cub Swanson, some of the fastest guys in the game, um, and I keep up with their speed. So I'm going to have the size and strength advantage. I'm going to have the speed advantage. I'm going to be the better wrestler, the better striker, more creative, more elusive. I mean, I think I beat him everywhere this fight takes place. Yeah. Where are you at, I guess, mentally going into a fight that's actually for a championship, for a promotion that's well known, you know, around the world? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've been in the gym training with people like Holly Holm, Carlos Condit, Donald Cerrone, John Dodson, all these people that are training for their own world titles. Mentally, how does that help you? I mean, you know, absolutely, it helps me. Just anytime I have a self doubt, I go, hmm, who am I training with again? How are those rounds going? Okay, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all yeah, right. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've been fighting for with RFA for a couple of fights now. I mean, what this do will you? Be my second. Yeah. What do you hope this fight does for you and, and your future? I mean, this one should catapult me right into the UFC. If they don't sign me after this one, I'd be a little bit upset. But hopefully, uh, after I go out there and make quick work of Hione, get a call from Sean Shelby in the UFC and tell them, the, tell them they tell me that they want to sign me. Yeah, there was a little bit of buzz the last time, you know, I guess you fought and people, I think it was a fight that fell off and uh, Dave Scholler from the UFC kind of mm -hmm. gave you a shout out, like, keep your head up. What kind of, I guess, just confidence does that instill in you that someone high with the PR department and yeah. the promotion you're trying to get into is shouting you out? Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of buddies with Dave Scholler. Yeah. Having been out there with Cowboy, I've been to his house and hung out before and met him. Um, so, you know, it's absolutely awesome to have those guys yeah. cheer me on, rooting for me. Yeah, you talked about training with Via Senor. What are you doing with him? Obviously, one of the local legends here in the MMA scene. Uh, I'm not training too much with him. He's training <laughs> some of the other guys. Uh, he teaches the classes every once in a while, but he's just teaching his uh, you know old kung fu knowledge that he's got from back in the day. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, we talked the last time you were here. We talked about how you do some side training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're training a lot of the, I guess, some older gentlemen mm -hmm. and then a mixture of some, you know, young fighters also. How does that change now that you're going into, I think, right now, the biggest fight of your career? Uh, it's all the same. You know, my training's the same. Um, it's just a little more tailor-made for this opponent. I'm still training the same guys I was training before. Still got to make my money. Still got to pay my rent. Mm. You know, I mean, it's a decent organization, pretty big organization. But 
um, yeah, I'm not not making a lot of money yet, yeah. so I still got to make my, my rent money on the side. Yeah, and I think, you know, you got Holly Holmes fight coming up right after yours. So what's mm -hmm. the gym environment like right now? Oh, uh, it's hustle and bustle. Everybody's going, everybody's grinding. Uh, a lot of big fights coming up, and everybody's just in there getting after it. It's best gym I've ever seen. Yeah, we've only done this with a couple of other guests, but I'm gonna give you a okay. bit of rapid fire. You give me the first either Ooh. item or thought that comes into your head when I ask you these questions. Favorite book? Uh, it'd have to be the Incerto series by Nassim Taleb. Why? I'll follow up with that one. Uh, it's just deep, philosophical, very interesting, um, very unusual subject matter. That's strange. The next question is favorite philosopher? <laughs> Nassim Taleb. <laughs> <laughs> favorite Ninja Turtle? Oh, Michelangelo, without a doubt. Why? He's more like a hippie. You know, loves his pizza, loves his skateboard. <laughs> a little bit like you here. Yeah. Favorite city in the world? Ooh, favorite city. Uh, Not a big city person, but I have to say LA just because of Venice Beach. Yeah. City that you would like to visit that you've never gone to before? Mm. <laughs> Somewhere in China? Where's uh? It's a big country, Macau? man. Oh, there you go. There you go. How about that you one? like the gambling. Favorite movie of all time? Come back to that one. All right, red or green? <laughs> green. Favorite movie of all time? <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings? You gotta watch yeah. the Royal Tenenbaums, man. I'm telling you, you Is look just good, like huh? the bomber. All right. Yeah, so for people that want to catch up with you, obviously before your fight and after this huge fight, where can they catch you? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, you can hit me on Groovy Lando. And um, yeah, Jackson Wing social media page, I'm all over it. So again, I gotta ask you, why Groovy? Groovy, it just goes Where'd with the persona, man. You know, it goes with the persona. Uh, it just kind of fits my personality. Yeah. Rolls off the tongue. Groovy Lando. Yeah. So it's a big fight for you again. March 4th, RFA 36. Yeah. You'll be taking on Hione Barcelos for the RFA featherweight title. Best of luck. Bring the gold home, man. Thank you, sir. You guys stay tuned after the break. We'll have the round table.